I don't know how to make pizza. Well, I'm going to show um, you. You do that like very fast. I know. I'm a pizza man's daughter. What can I say? And it's like the smoothest. So you learned with your father? I did. We're going to do some potatoes. Starch on starch. It is, it's starch on starch. It's something you eat once in a blue moon, but it is so worth it. And that's it. Hi, I am with Laura Vitali in our kitchen. Laura, cheers. Cheers, thank you for having me. No, thank you for share, uh, sharing your knowledge with me about pizza because you, you really, really taught me something interesting today. Oh, thank you. Now I'm excited to test it, of course. It is so... And it's not your one. average pizza, too. It's I not mean... your average pizza, but it's a combination that's very normal to me and, and sort of in my culinary background. You know, I was born in Italy and I moved to the States when I was 12. Oh, I see. Wow, yeah, and you have no accent at all. That's what everybody tells me. That's amazing. Where in Italy? You don't either. <laughs> no, you're <yeah>, right. <laughs> of course not. Let's try. I mean, Let's. so we, we eat with our hands? We yes. eat with our hands. Mm. That's really, really yummy. It's really fantastic. Mm -hmm. And it's funny that the potato goes so well. I mean, starch on starch, you would think. You would think it would be really heavy? Yes, it's not. I think the reason why it feels that way is because of the offset bite of the onion. Mm -hmm. where it, it almost cuts through the richness a little bit. But also, I think a lot of people would say, I don't like onions on my pizza, but when you cook them at such a high heat... They don't taste like onion. They don't, they're really they, sweet. They, rosemary also, like, is crunchy and it has this kind of, like, toasted, toasted mm -hmm. rosemary flavor. I think it came out really delicious. How did you start, I mean, uh, doing what you're doing now? When I eat pizza and I make pizza, it's more of what it reminds me of. It reminds me of this time I spent with my dad and the time you know, him teaching me when the restaurant closed at night, he would stand there for hours teaching me how to roll it out. Cooking is very personal. It's something that I turn to when I'm having a bad day. It's something I turn to when I want to feel like I'm close to home. Yes. I wanted to write a cookbook. And my husband said, you can do that, but then after you seven friends buy it, and nobody else does because no one knows your name, then you'll go bankrupt from spending too much money on actually writing the book. But then he said, you know, we could we could do this crazy experiment and we could film some videos and see how the audience likes it. And put it on YouTube. Put it on YouTube. But people picked up people, on it. People picked up on it. People loved it. And it was well received. So in real time, basically, it's half hour of cooking. Right. That you're sharing with the people on YouTube. Exactly. On your show. Exactly. It's what, and then people go crazy and they start to watch. And, and yeah. today, I think you, you, you have 17 million viewers? 30, 39 million? What? 30, between yeah. 38 and 39 million. 39 million yeah. people watching you on a daily basis? Daily uh, basis. So what are your plans for the future? I mean, what, what is your goal? Eventually, I would love to be an author and a you know, cookbook author, and I would love to have my own show on, on television. What are your favorite recipes or what, what is your favorite food uh, to cook and, and eat, of course? My favorite dish of all time would have to be gnocchi. Gnocchi? Gnocchi is my favorite. Uh, has to be served with a meat sauce. We call it Sunday sauce. Sunday sauce. It takes hours and hours and hours to cook. If you cook it for two hours, I'm not going to eat it. It needs to cook You're for... You're not going to eat it? No, it needs to cook for about five to six hours. So who's your biggest inspiration? In my biggest inspiration is, is definitely my grandmother. She's a woman who raised seven children, you know, small but very small budget. You would never know it. The amount of love and affection that went into every dish and into every activity with her kids is... You know, it's it's very inspiring, and she's battled lots of different illnesses. You'd never know it. She's the happiest, spunkiest, cutest little person in the entire world. So you're becoming, or, or you have already become a celebrity. I mean, 37 million people, 38 million people following you. Yeah. Um, how do you deal with that? It's very flattering, and I'm very honored that people think of me as a celebrity. I don't think of myself as one. I just think of myself as someone who's sharing her passion with the world pretty much you know you've made a difference you know you've become someone when you go i went to rent a car one day in in um at the airport in san francisco yes and the guy behind the counter almost had a heart attack because he realized who i was and he gave you a, a better car he did ah, he did that, you made um, it that's it well this is a great success and, and very well deserved and thank you. Uh, please come back and, i uh, would love to teach me the new keys next time you know what why don't we we should. We absolutely should. We can make a nice gnocchi together. It would be dynamite. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much again. Thank Cheers. you so much. Cheers. And let's enjoy the pizza. Let's.